And now, the final curtain. Alright, so, World 6 Fun. The first thing I want to do here is turn to the right. Because there's the first jet pod. Although you can stop for a moment to pick up these little firework items here. And then with a well-timed triple jump, although there's a lot of leeway on this one, you can go straight to the jet pods. Now, with that jet pod and a couple others, it's going to be a couple of those plant things from uh, World 2 that fire seeds. Although, so long as you're not standing on the same level as them, they won't be able to hit you. Now, this is tricky. What you're supposed to do is go the long way around, but you can just barely make it with a well-timed triple jump. Which saves a little time. Alright. Two jet pods left. Now we're going to move out here and take this. Free time. Now one thing I should point out about time stops is that not only do they freeze all the enemies, look at the radar. It points out where the jet pods and the exit are. So these are particularly useful. We advance forward to next jet pod. And then right after this, I believe we can go to the bonus stage. Yes, I know where this one is. Right there. Now, something I should point out about this bonus stage. I do this stage wrong. What you're really supposed to do, and what really works best, is if you get on top of there, and then shoot everything around you. This is like the half ass sort of way. The main thing that held me up and prevented me from being able to complete this bonus stage successfully is the hit detection of, like, the walls and boxes. You can see how sometimes, like, it seems like I should be able to shoot around something, but instead it just collides with it. That is the main thing that screwed me over in this bonus stage. I still came really close to getting this, but... Ah, oh, so frustrating. And that's why I have to keep jumping and changing positions. You know, aside from running out of balloons on one particular side. Ugh. This was the moment that really screwed me over the most. But, anyway. We still have a jet pod to get. And it's right there. And hey, we're already done with this. Now we just keep advancing. There's actually sort of a semi-linear path that you can follow to, uh, well, at least the exit from the final jet pod. And that was surprisingly not difficult. However, this is the only such stage in this world where you collect jet pods. The other two are boss fights. Now, you pro you're probably guessing that Baron Aloha is the Stage 3 boss, but Stage 2? Well, remember how Link had to fight against his shadow at one point in one of the tempos? Temples, not tempos. That's basically what you're doing here. You are fighting against Mega Robit. That is his main attack just randomly jumping around for you. This is his second attack. He will send little Roberts after you. And I can tell you that these things hurt like a bitch. Now there are a couple things you can do. You can jump on top of Roberts and lure them toward you. Or you can do this, lure them into a corner and then jump on them and shoot them. It doesn't always work as you just saw, but it's reasonably effective in killing all of these things. Now, with something like this, you're probably wondering why I'm not just jumping on top of it, like I do with uh, a lot of the other bosses. And that's because this thing will rear back and blast my ass if I try doing that. And it takes off a fair chunk of health, so I really don't want to do it. Now, there's another platform on the other side of the stadium 
Uh, that's similar to the one megawatt uh, stand. Uh, and you can get these things to jump onto it and try and pursue you from there. And that is also a very effective way to deal with these things. But the problem with that is, they can sometimes get caught under the platform. And then you'll have to like move off to the side and do what I did. Now, this is the other attack that he does. It's like uh, the speed charge thing. Like, If you've ever played Duke Nukem Forever, which from the reviews that that game got, you probably haven't. But uh, the Psychoid Emperor has a similar attack. And this is where he shoots little spikes at you. Pretty easy to avoid, but when he does it in tandem with the charge, uh, you'll have to move around a little bit to be able to avoid anything. Plus, there are times like that where half of him will go into the wall and it makes him harder to hit. This boss, much like the next boss, is about patience. Being able to stick to the pattern. Because you'll notice that he's not doing the little robot thing at all. You will also notice that I am not using any of the fireworks. That's because I really want to save them for the Baron Aloha fight. Because that's where they'll come in handy the most. And I'm going to try and do it without them, but just in case, it's good to have them on hand. Thing simply refuses to die. There it goes. All right. All right. Okay, I didn't intentionally want to say the same thing he usually does when he plays the stage, but oh well, can't take it back now. I couldn't just cut it out in Vegas or anything. No, that would be cheating. All right, Baron Aloha. Or should I say, giant robotic form of Baron Aloha. He has three main attacks. That ground pound explosion thing is the first one. This is the second one. Random blue orbs. And in a moment he will do his third one, I think. Yes, there's the missile attack. You can tell which attack he's going to do based on what gesture he does. When he leans back like that, it's the blue orbs. When he kind of does like a ballerina pose forward, he does the missiles, as you can see. And when he jumps, obviously, ground pound. The main thing about this fight is being able to time your jump, and when he attacks uh, with either the blue orbs or the missile, to get directly on top of him. Because that is the one place that he can't shoot you. That's also the one place where if he uses missiles, they will simply redirect around you so as not to hit the Baron. Ugh. I thought that one a little close. Alright, got him about a little over halfway down. And I'm kind of surprised that he doesn't have any sort of physical attacks where he tries to go after you. And as you just saw, I took damage even though I was directly above him. That's because I went too high into the air. You want to stay as close as possible to his head. And this is his second form. This one has two attacks, one of which you already saw, and then he shoots these orb things on top of the missiles. Those orbs, if you don't shoot them down, will shoot these little diamond things at you. But... There is a way to work around this one. Stay as close to him as possible. Because the thing about this fight is, he's constantly trying to run away from you so that he can do his attacks. But if you're close to him, and as you'll see, you don't take damage from touching him in that form. So you can just run up behind him and pelt him with your shots. And it, it's actually surprisingly easy for a final boss. This is the third stage, which is more just a matter of annoyance with trying to hit this guy. And as you can see, Baron Aloha is no more. Or is he? 
He is, right? Right? You only damage my base slightly. Prepare yourself, Robert. Now my minions are really ready for you. I, Baron Aloha, am invincible! You ain't down yet, Baron Yep. There's more. Jumping Flash. When we next come back to Jumping Flash, I will show you extra mode.